And let's see what else. There's an enormous butt coming. Yeah, so <laughs> huge. It's like a badonka. <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I am good. How are you? I am good. Thank good. you. Isn't that funny that we say that? How are you? How are you? That's very... No one really cares. They just want to get it over with. <laughs> so when someone says, well, that's oh. always like, oh, <laughs> like, no, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have that. asked. Yeah, I should just say, what's up? Yeah, sup. But then they might be like, well. Yeah. And they're like, wait, what's up, too? <laughs> That's not nice. Anyway. It's caller day. It is, it is. And we are joined today by a lovely caller named Elizabeth. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, so sweet. What a smile on you. My goodness. (laughs) Beaming. Beaming smile. Okay, Elizabeth, please give us your name, your city or region, whatever you're comfortable sharing, and your story, please. Yeah, so I'm Elizabeth. I'm uh, 31 years old, and um, I live in a city in the upper Midwest. And um, the person person in question is also 31. He's my boyfriend. And I think my overall type of question is like, a, am I the asshole kind of question? <laughs> so um, we love those. Mm. Yes. <laughs> So my my boyfriend and I met um, in March of 2022, and we don't live together, but um, we do plan on uh, doing that like kind of sometime soon when the next time our our leases are up. Um, But yeah, it's been a really, really lovely, like healthy relationship where um, I feel like we are both incredibly independent um, and we have kind of our own life passions and um uh 15 months later you know our relationship hasn't really affected those which is is nice to have like kind of to maintain your own independence and purpose and to have someone who like supports that and also has that for themselves um yeah i feel like there's a big um, butt coming yeah. oh yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Um, yeah, oh, so <laughs> <laughs> silver platter. <laughs> mm. Sorry, Elizabeth. Maybe there isn't a big butt coming. No, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think overall it really is has been wonderful, and it feels just like a really healthy, like sustainable relationship. Our beliefs um, and our values and. Um, our backgrounds are really similar. Um, kind of the main core things about him are, are the things that maybe matter are really similar, but then we're also like super opposite in some ways, um, which I really love. I think like in ways that I need someone to balance me, like I'm such a planner and, um, kind of anxious, like future oriented kind of, and he's very like spontaneous and very present and, um, and let's see what else. There's an enormous butt coming. Yeah, so <laughs> huge. It's like a badonka. <laughs> Sorry, Elizabeth. No, he he sounds perfect. We're just dying <laughs> to know. Okay. <laughs> I'll get there. So um, yeah, so it's been overall really really lovely. Um, so the one thing that I've noticed um, that has been kind of a like recurring struggle is. Um, I found that like whenever I mention um, like a past relationship, um, he does get like um, emotionally triggered. Like I think he actually is quite a jealous person, but maybe didn't always used to be that way. Um, So I would, you know, for example, I would make a joke about like something funny that happened like after like sex with a ex or something. And he was like, he would just shut down and I was like, Oh my God, what did, what did I say? And he's just like, I just really, I don't like talking about you being with someone else in that way. And that, I it, I just have never experienced this. So I, it just was like, Oh, like he was very, yeah. I think he's just like emotionally triggered. Like he doesn't like to even go there. Like to think that either of us had like a past before we met each other. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Which is not super uncommon. No, it's for not. What it's mm. worth. Not uncommon. Like, yeah, it's in the minority, but it's not uncommon at all. It's a, it's a, I don't know it's if a near minority. majority. I think it's, it's like, like 40%. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking 50-50. I feel like half Possibly the guys 50/50. I've... Yeah, you, think it's you might less? be right. I feel like half the guys I've dated, if I talked about exes or especially something like that, where it's like post coital funny thing happened, I would feel like half my exes at the time would have been yeah. like, I don't want to, <gasps> really? I don't want to hear about that. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to hear about it unless it's hot. No, that's <laughs> not true. Yeah. No, you want, you wouldn't no, care, care, but okay. Sorry. Um, question. <laughs> question. Yeah. Is his reaction like. Like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like basically takes out like a like a pitchfork. Um, what, what, what are we talking? I, I guess I'm comparing it to my other relationships. So this might not be like, I don't know, my version of a six or seven. It's not other people's, but I oh, think it's around that's, there. That's pretty okay. high. Is that like yeah. screaming or level or? No, it's like him like shutting down, like getting really sad. Oh, um, like 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 crying? Mm, no, just <laughs> well, you're like I'm just like crying. really having no energy left to. Does he cry? Yeah. Does he cry when you talk about it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, is is he uh, shut down for a long time, or is it like just like like five minutes and then you're back to normal? It's usually like the rest of the day. Damn. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Oh, that yeah. is okay. That's what makes it a six seven. Yeah, yeah. It's the so length. it's the duration as opposed to the intensity. I mean, yeah. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but sorry, continue your okay. your story. Yeah. So end question. So I think I, we've talked about this one. It happened a couple of times. I was like, I wanted to kind of figure out why that was. So we he said that like he admitted he was like, yeah, I, I never used to be like this, and I think my last relationship really messed me up. Basically, his last relationship ended with. I don't know, like some ambiguous, like potential cheating and like long story short, like um, she was just immediately moved on and they were on the phone one night, I think. And and she like heard someone else there, like another guy. So I don't know. I think that particular t- night um, and, and that whole last relationship really like traumatized him in a way that um, it just mm-hmm. like whenever some yeah whenever i mention someone else like even if it's five from five years ago it kind of puts him back or what i'm assuming like it puts him back into that situation and that emotional distress um could you give me an example of the type of conversation that triggers him like just give me an example like talk to me like i'm him like what's the thing you're telling me like what specifics are you are you talking about I feel like she kind of gave an example, which is like, oh, yeah, this one time this funny thing happened. Yeah, but yeah. how specific are you getting? How are you getting graphic? Are you no, just mentioning that you happened to sleep with the person? That's just part of the story? or like- No, the only mention of like anything physical or anything was like, oh, one time like after like whatever, like after we had sex or something. And I would I would say that if it like um, was after needed we made in love. The story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only if it was needed, right? But what happened no. after sex? What's give me the exact last thing that triggered him? I want to know the exact thing. Just give it to me. Um. Because otherwise, I don't. I don't know. You may be saying some crazy shit. Yes. So this the the last thing is probably is probably the ending of the story that I will. I guess I can go to right now. Okay. Um. Yeah. So so basically, I I'm a teacher and I have to get like a summer job every summer. Um. And so I, I got a summer job um, in something I'm kind of really passionate about. And uh, it's a really small like startup company. Um, it has to do with like environmentalism, which is one of my side passions. And um, so I started this job like a month ago and it's a four or five person company. And it's run by this guy who's like my age. Um, and he is kind of cute um and but like I don't have any any emotional feelings for him um Mm. and I actually like don't even know him that well um so basically the one of the main things that caused me to write in was this event that happened so um I had to uh pick up some supplies from my boss basically one night um I really I don't work with him directly I mainly see him like just when I have to pick something up from the warehouse or 
maybe like once a month. So I met up with him for five minutes and I picked something up and we chatted and um, we just said like, how have you been doing? And then I left. And then five minutes later, he, my boss texted me and said, by the way, I have this ticket to this um, like sports game tonight if you wanted to go. And I didn't think of anything of it because we don't even really know each other. Um, but I, and then I had to change over. that. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I headed over to my boyfriend's right after that. And I was like, he said this. No, is that weird? Just Wait, so, so like, you declined, right? You declined uh, yeah. the invitation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wait, that's the story. That's it. Well, well, let her get to the end. Let her get to the end. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. I was waiting for that. I was like, oh. Uh, no. I just want her to get to the end uh, and then ask the question. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, yeah, so you declined you the declined. invitation. I did. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. So then I just kind of, you know, offhandedly mentioned like, oh, like, isn't that weird that this guy invited me to this thing and I don't even know him? And he's like, my boss. And he got so upset and was like, he's obviously trying to hit on you. And then he was like, how do you feel about him? And he was like really, really pressing me. And I was like, I kept saying like, I don't even really know him. And, but he was like, but how do you feel about him? Like, do you think, blah, blah, and, and do you think he's cute? Or like, mm -hmm. he was just really pressing me. And I actually like, I felt really guilty lying. So I said like, yeah, like I might have like some teeny tiny, like meaningless crush on him. Like it's very honest cute or whatever. And he just, Shut Lost down. Okay. Uh, it, it was like, I just, I think maybe I was kind of unconsciously avoiding admitting that um, because I think I, I knew he might take it badly, but I actually didn't know he would take it so, so badly. So, the, okay, the thing I'm confused about is, is this is not a story about an ex or about sex. You, you had said that that's what the stories were about. No, no. She's saying that that's how she first discovered that her boyfriend is jealous. Oh, that's the first one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And since yeah. then, there's been... She was been... planting the seed ah, of jealousy. Okay. Sorry, I missed yeah. that. Okay. okay, so number one, overreaction, big time. And also, um, good on you to be honest about thinking he's cute, because that would be the giveaway for me. Like, if I was in a similar situation and you said, oh, yeah, yeah, he's kind of cute, but whatever. That, to me, would be the thing where, like, okay, I trust I don't you. have to worry about it. I don't yeah, have to worry I about agree. It. It's when you're like, yeah, it's what like, are you oh, talking about? Oh, he's ugly. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to do I, that. I, I like, never would minute. think about that ever. Yeah, no, he's repulsive. I would never agree. Then it's going yeah. to be like, oh, the lady doth protest. The honesty is what he missed that. Like, he's so, like, immediately goes to jealousy that he's not even reading the cues. But that's more nuanced. It's an overreaction. If this is an am I the asshole question, you're definitely not the asshole here, 100%. Wait, is that what the question is? Yeah, I think so. I think I, so overall, I think it, it would be like how, so I've, ever since I've been, I think just desperately trying to make him believe that this is nothing and it won't turn into anything. I think that's the other part is like, he's convinced that he's being, he's going to be turned into fool. something. See, see, yeah. What, what's frustrating to me again is the honesty. It's yes. like, you did not have to tell him that your no, boss invited you again. You could have never told him a thing, but you chose to tell him and to tell him that yes, he's your boss cute. is kind of cute. Yeah. And I'm sure if he saw a picture of him, he'd be like, Oh yeah, he is yeah. cute. You volunteered that information. Yeah. You did not need to tell him. He overlooked all that. That means that he, he has so, he has a deep rooted issue with jealousy, and that it's so deep rooted that he wasn't able to see any of these cues or any of the evidence, and he just immediately jumped to like, "What's going on here? You like this guy? You're gonna have sex with him? You're gonna leave me for him?" Yeah, and I think my brain immediately went to like, "Oh, I think this is triggering him from his last relationship," and I actually was I didn't want to let like go full on and be like, I think this is what's happening. But I was like, I'm wondering, like, do you think, you know, that this might be related to what you experienced with your last girlfriend? And he was like, maybe a little, but like, this is a really big deal. Like, this is your boss and you're going to work with him. And, and these feelings like can develop. And, and he, I think he also believes that we don't really have control over that, which I really, I believe that we have like a lot of control over mm -hmm. If things develop or not. Um, yeah. I mean, I you guess declined the offer. Question. Mm. And you immediately reported back to your boyfriend. Well, it's also a lack of respect for her. I He's agree. like saying you're like an animal. You're yeah, like yeah. a wild animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If he wants to have sex with you, you're just going to spread yeah, your legs. Yeah, yeah. If you're in the presence of his pheromones yeah. for too long, yeah. how can she boss? possibly yeah. resist <laughs> her powerful, good looking boss? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we keep interrupting. Sorry. What no, were you no. Say? 
Yeah. So I think my ultimate question would be like, how to, how do I get my boyfriend to see that this situation is not something he needs to worry about, but also without invalidating his feelings. So I mm. think that's maybe what I initially have been doing is like, like, no, no, this is fine. This is normal. It's not a big deal. And, and I think that also has been invalidating like his emotions around. So, do you want to spend the rest of your life with this guy? I think it's really possible. Hmm. I would lean in to the positivity of what you feel and sit him down and be like, listen, I just want to let you know, like, totally unrelated to anything. You shouldn't even do this on the heels of him being jealous mm -hmm. or anything. It could be like you're just having like a wine in the country, like a whatever. Wine? A wine? <laughs> a, 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 a wine. A wine? <laughs> a single wine. Okay. One wine. Okay. You're having one wine in the country somewhere. It's a beautiful thing. You just say, I just want to let you know, tell him how much you love him. Tell him, I really, really, really care about you. I like, you're so important to me. And I want you to know that I know you, there's been incidences in the past where, you know, you've gotten jealous or whatever. You thought that I was going to do this. And I just want you to know 100% like- How all this in has I am. Like I'm all in, exactly. Yeah. I'm all in. All your worries, don't don't even think about it. Like I'm 100% with you. I'm 100% honest with you. And this is the most important thing to me. I don't want you to worry. And, you know, out of the moment- It'll be much more powerful because if you tell him that in, in the, the moment context. of the fight, it'll just sound like you're trying to end the fight or trying to mm -hmm. like, you know, appease apologize him. or appease. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I would say one chat, like in a time when you're both happy, you know, everything having is fine. Wine. You're having one wine and uh, see how he reacts. I'm if he doesn't react well to that. There's a problem. He most likely will How react well. He's not well. not going to react well to that if That's it's not true. in that context. If he doesn't, it's a problem. Well, Elizabeth, do you think that you are generally effusive? Like, do you think you tell him how you feel and how excited you are about him and this relationship? I do. Yeah. I actually, it was his birthday a couple of days ago and I, I um, wrote him basically like a poem that I, I yeah. attempted to do just that. Like I really wanted him to feel secure and us and mm. yeah i think that's a really good point it's like oh it's all about the context like if i say all those things like right after a fight about it yeah. it's more yeah it, can yeah, be it doesn't sick. work does it reach fight level um no it just has reached the level where it does come up i would say like 80 to 90 percent of the time we, we hang out oh and this what? is very recent. This is recent. So this and, is like oh, you didn't in tell the us last. That. Yeah, this is in the last three mm. weeks. So, so when did um, the boss ticket sports game thing happen exactly? Like three weeks ago. Exactly three. Okay. All yeah. right. <sighs> so this uh, is recent. So it still is extremely fresh in uh, his. That's not too long. Yeah. If this if this happened three months ago and it was still hap like he was still bringing it up this often, I would have a problem. He look, he's clearly very jealous and he got burned in the past. All the things. I don't know if I totally buy that he wasn't jealous until his last relationship. Mm, if I'm I don't honest. buy it at all. Yeah. <gasps> I, yeah. Personally, I think it probably worsened it. Something bad happened. Maybe his trust was broken and that really just you know, f fanned the flames of his nascent jealousy. Mm -hmm. But I think that the thing that we both focused on when you told your story about the boss and the tickets to the sports game thing, I really think you should lean into like he needs to realize that you are not required by any relationship law to tell him things like, hey, my boss asked me to the sports game. Isn't that funny? Ha ha. I said no. No big deal. You you don't have to tell him that. No. The fact that you're telling him that should be seen as uh, right there, a sign of your trustworthiness and the fact that you guys are in this together. You're a team. There's That's nothing to worry problem. about. That's why it's a deep rooted problem. No, I know, not... but she needs to remind him because sometimes when right. you're in that moment, you're like, mm. I, you only processing the information and not the fact that you were told the information. Right. Mm. He needs to be reminded that he knows about this because you told him. Right. He didn't find out through go like by going through your phone. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why to me, it's this is not even a conversation. This is more like a training. It's yes. Like she's training. It is. You have to think of him like he, there's a broken piece and you need it to be trained out. Yeah. It's you're right. It's like he has a tendency to go yeah, panic pee in about the house. other men. <laughs> so pee, he's peeing on the yeah. yeah no, like he's, he's got he's, a wee wee pad and he's peeing <laughs> on the rug. 
Yeah, he's really good most of the time, but then when yeah. you're away for a little too long, he he goes yeah. on the rug. Yeah. And Unfortunately, you, you can't rub thing. his face in the pee. You got to be a little more gentle about it. But you should, as Charlene said, you should emphasize that I am being 100% open with you. I never had to tell you that. And I will continue to be. That's like yes. your pledge. And he has to understand that the woman who cheats on him is the one who doesn't say anything about that. Mm -hmm. Who comes yeah. home smelling like some guy's cologne, having had a great time at the Michigan Wolverines game. Sorry, I just, I don't know <laughs> why, why I thought of that. It's way, probably a better ticket than that, right? <laughs> so it was a good sports ticket you turned down. You should tell him that too, if he's a sports fan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to cook. Give me some factor now. <laughs> mm. That you don't like that one? I liked it. Yeah, that's potential. It sounded kind of like '90s oh. pop song. I don't want to wait for my meal to come over. <laughs> yes, that's why we love us some factor, Andy. Because oh, yeah. sometimes you don't want to cook. Sometimes you don't want to wait. And or sometimes you don't want that meal to have been cooked and then travel yes. and still cook in a bag and travel <laughs> through the roads and streets of your town. When you order a delivery, sometimes the food really just doesn't taste the same. It loses that restaurant sheen. And that's why we love Factor, because not only do you not have to cook, and not only are the meals chef prepared and dietitian approved, but they really have that restaurant taste that we always talk about here. And there's no faster way to get restaurant taste in your mouth yes. than Factor. Because it is never, ever frozen, meaning you don't need to thaw it. Mm -hmm. to cook it it's already pre-prepared pre-cooked you just heat it up and let me tell you it tastes like restaurant it tastes like restaurant but on top of that they have options for many different diets so if you are watching your calories or you're keto or you're vegan or you're looking to up your protein intake and it just lives in your fridge so that days where it's lunchtime and neither of us want to cook it is such a relief to open the fridge and be like Ah, factor. It's like, ah, when you it is like, ah, oh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and it's never just a convenience thing. It's not like, oh, I have no time. I got to eat a factor. Yeah, I'm settling like, for this. Oh, I have no time. Sweet. I yeah. get to eat a factor. Yes. Also, factor is a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions. Source 100% renewable electricity for their offices and production sites. And feature sustainably sourced seafood in all their meals. So head to factormeals.com slash shandy50 and use code shandy50 to get 50% off. That's code Shandy50 at factormeals.com slash Shandy50 for 50% off. Gushy, 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 gushy. <laughs> Andy, you're so excited when you just know we're about to talk about I slept you're... well. <laughs> I slept really well. Cozy, 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 cozy. Well, actually, a lot of the stuff in this house is now from Cozy Earth. All of our, our entire bedding situation. Mm -hmm. So we're talking pillowcases, sheets, and towels. Our hand towels, our bath towels are all Cozy Earth. Oh, Andy. don't forget. Oh, Andy's pants. He's wearing them right now. I have pajamas from them. Okay. Cozy Earth products are made from viscose from bamboo, making them more sustainable, but also insanely soft. And we have to talk, Andy, lift your legs about these pants. These look as good as the day you got them, there's no pilling, there's no fading, there's no tearing. And this is just a drop in the bucket. Because let me tell you, our bed sheets, it's like sleeping on a cloud. They're unbelievably soft, way softer than any cotton sheets I've ever had, including like thousand thread count bed sheets. And they're unbreakable. Unbreakable. They never rip. Yes. They never tear. There's never even like a slight, like you look, you see one of those irregularities in the seam yeah, where it's yeah. like, it's thinking about ripping. Yeah. It's like one day I'm going to rip. Yeah. Since I've known you, we've gone through a couple of sets of sheets, honestly, because of your sharp toenails. And now I cannot cut my toenails with impunity <laughs> and sleep without worry. Mm -hmm. But that's really the essence of Cozy Earth is that paradox of unbelievably soft and Basically indestructible. Mm -hmm. Also cooling. Can we talk about the cooling? Oh, I mean, I, 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 I don't even know what it's like to sweat anymore. I kind of miss it. I kind of want to just feel it one time more. <laughs> Andy used to be a big bedtime sweater yeah. and to the point where it would it's gross. stain. Yeah, get yellow. It There'd be a shape sheets. of me yellow. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a crime scene. Just yeah. like this yellow shape. My alter ego. <laughs> yellow, Andy. <laughs>
And let's not forget Oprah. Yes, cozy earth bed sheets have been one of Oprah's favorite things for a whopping five years in a row. That's insane. So our listeners, the Shandies, can save up to 40% on Cozy Earth today. Go to CozyEarth.com and enter our promo code SHANDY to get up to 40% off now. Try them for 100 nights, and if you don't feel the difference, send them back for a full refund. Cozy Earth, C-O-Z-Y-E-A-R-T-H.com, promo code SHANDY, CozyEarth.com. I, yeah, I think you should lean into, I. this is my pledge to this relationship is I will be honest with you and your job, your pledge is to not assume the worst about me. Like yeah. you deserve more than that. 15 months. Like you've put in, this is, yeah. this is not a baby relationship. Yeah. You deserve the benefit of the doubt in my opinion. Let me ask you one last question. And this is just for purely investigative research. Are you flirty around other guys? No, I don't think so. I, I believe you. Okay. Done. Yeah. I, I think, well, he actually, he asked me that, like, there's got, he said, when I, when I told him that my boss invited me to this game, he's like, there had, there has to be a reason why he did that. Like, were you, uh, were you guys uh, flirting? Uh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. I, don't like that I mean, maybe I was, me. I don't know. Nah, <laughs> I don't think you were. I mean, but I mean, your smile, I feel like any man would be like, want to go to this sports game with me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> like, I picture you being just nice and gorgeous and he's probably yeah. like, oh. Yeah, I mean, like, see, look, I can't blame this guy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, that bugs me a bit because, like, I, I understand why that would be a fleeting thought that he would have because he has his jealous issues. But that shouldn't come up more than once. You know, you oh, you should just have to nip that in the bud. I told you about it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sorry, let's say you do have a flirty personality. Yeah, who cares? Is, does that mean that your relationship is doomed? Yeah. I, it's a I little... wasn't asking that because I'm going to blame her. I was asking yeah. that because I was wondering if you that's wanted the, data. the guy's sensitive to yeah, it. And you, he's, it's a pattern. That's yeah, all. you wanted the data. Mm, I yeah. understand that. And I mean, I know some people who are super flirty while yeah. in relationships, flirty with other people. Totally. And it's fine. Yeah, and some people can't handle it and some people can, but it would be a real shame if that's the thing. Let's say you are flirty. This is worst case scenario. You're flirty. No, but she's not. Is that it? That's the thing? Is that going to ruin your relationship? Give me a break. You're not Mm -hmm. even. I trust you. I believe that too. Like I don't get flirty vibes. I would say that you do two things. This is is my advice and then Charlene can take over. The thing I said, which is have... When you're having your one wine, have the conversation, but also avoid just on your part, avoid talking about past relationships. Just say that, Mm -hmm. you know what, if I'm going to be in a good relationship with this guy, I just have to avoid this. That's the sacrifice I have to make. Just avoid the topic if you can, when possible. Yes, but I even. Until he can handle it. Mm. No, but I feel that it should even be discussed that you're not going to talk about it anymore. Okay. It's Mm -hmm. like you have a big reaction when I even mention the fact that I you know, dated so-and-so for five years. Like you, that's a big chunk of your life, you know, to be in a past relationship and spend a while with someone else. Mm -hmm. So if that's all off the table, I think you should say, I don't want to have this kind of tension. I feel like I have no choice, but to not bring it up. I think it's more powerful not to say that, but that's a little passive aggressive. I kind of, I don't think it's even passive aggressive. I think it's aggressive. And I think it's necessary Mm. because he needs to be taught that he's the one now that is limiting their. So you're you're basically slapping his wrist by saying that. I I, I get you. I got it. I think it's more passive aggressive to not bring it up. And I think it's idealistic to think that not bringing it up is suddenly going to open the doors to in a year, suddenly it's okay. Like, maybe you're right. that's, uh, That's your call, but you definitely have to have the talk. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I feel like this is, this could become, this could infect your relationship. I agree. That's what I'm nervous about. I think I I can already kind of feel him. And I do have faith that like, even with time, it will be okay. But I I can already kind of feel him like pulling a little bit away from me. Like he's just less affectionate in the last three weeks. And that's that's why I want to emphasize that you're not doing this to just appease him you're doing this also to protect yourself remember like you're half the relationship so you want to protect yourself from being in a long-term relationship with someone who has a problem that's potentially going to get worse and make your life very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. so as much as you're trying to sit down and appease him and make him feel better and more comfortable you're also gauging the situation 
for yourself. You need to be with a partner who trusts you, who is not always suspicious of you, who every time you know you have any interaction with another guy or you mention your ex-boyfriend or is mm. having sex with someone 20 years ago, so he's going to freak out. That's not a way to live. It's just walking on eggshells. Not cool. So think about yourself as much as you're thinking about him. You know, you seem like a very nice person. You seem like a very giving, like... I, I don't see you as like a dominant force in the relationship as far as discipline. Is that is that a correct impression? I can be pretty stubborn too. <laughs> mm. but. Do you feel, I want to just make sure that you can dish what you take. Mm, yeah. Like if he talks know, about his. Like, yeah, I think I, 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 I really tried hard to like put myself in his shoes with this. And I think I would be really sad and I would be really bummed and I wouldn't feel great about it. And Oh, I don't know. Like, I think what, this is what unexpected. I would try. Oh, I mean, we're both like extremely sensitive, uh, but, um, but uh, to me sensitive try, and, and jealous to the point where I think you don't give your, partner the benefit of the doubt or trust them when they tell you that there's nothing happening are different. Right. I would try to trust. I think I, what would I, what I would do is be very consciously aware of like, and is this now affecting a relationship? So I think I would try to uh, make sure that didn't happen. Um, I think what I'm more concerned about now is that obviously he, I do think he has some jealousy issues to work with and I'm, I'm, trying to decide like can he can he really work through those while he's in a relationship or is it I think he can you know yeah personally I I think yeah it's not extreme I actually think a- the right relationship can cure most mm. jealousy sure if I think about myself like my past I honest to God think that that's a huge part of it. Sure. I agree with you. you. It's like retraining. Yeah. I I think that, and also this level of jealousy that he has is not extreme. We've seen way worse than this. And we have to remember it's been three weeks. It has not been that long. I think time Mm -hmm. is going to heal most of this, if I'm honest. And if it doesn't, then you have a problem. Yeah. In my opinion. I, Mm -hmm. I agree. If this keeps coming up like in months. So, so I, I, we glossed over that, but you would have had a similar reaction if, you, if the, if the sides were flipped. Yeah, he's asked out on a date. Same exact situation. A, he tells concert. you, yeah. yeah, he tells you the whole thing, the exact, literally identical flip. Yeah, you're, you're in his shoes. You, you'd be very upset. I mean, I think if he said, "I have a little crush on her," I would. You, but you didn't say really- that. I, yeah, I said like, oh, maybe I have like a stupid, meaningless crush. Like, I think he's cute, but did that's Did she it. say that before? Yeah, she did say that. Did she say that? Yeah. I thought you just said you thought he was cute. No, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. I, would, I think I really I think, remember. Yeah, that. I said like a... <laughs> <laughs> and you're like a, an emoji right now. You're like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That ah. maybe was a little more honest than you needed to. Yeah, be. that might have been a little too much <laughs> honesty. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I now I'm like regretting. Oh. Yeah, that might yeah, have been too the much. The word honesty. crush, I think, you know, can make someone spiral. I don't know. I feel like maybe I can't remember whether she said that or not. Maybe I'm remembering I that from an e- from her that. email. I remember you saying that you did think he was kind of cute. That's yeah. what I remember. But saying you had a little crush on him, that that might have been too much. Oh, yeah, I think no. you. No, it's fine. I think no, you it's just, not like for relationship ending, but I think maybe just yeah, that might have been just a little bit more than the average person could handle. Yeah, even a non jealous person might be yeah. like, you don't need to tell me that. Yeah, yeah. Saying a guy is cute and saying you have a little crush on him are two very different things. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah, Charlene oh every day God. talks about guys she thinks are cute. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I th- I think about having a little crush is like basically nothing. And then having feelings for someone, that's a totally different thing. Have you defined that for him? Yes. Okay. As I have said, I do not have feelings for him. Okay. I think it's a semantics thing. Yeah, sure. You mm. might be right. Like, honestly, if you said you had a little crush on someone, I know, but I know you very well. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be worried. Well, we've been together for a lot longer than 15 months. Yeah. And they don't live together. It's it's hit or miss with, I have a crush. I would watch out with that, especially if he's got some sensitivities. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I We have to call you out on that. I feel like yeah. based on his history of being a little jealous about hearing past relationships, that was... 
Yeah. It was, yeah. It was a little you too You might honest. have planted a seed there. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't get that the first time. Sorry. But that doesn't change it. You're still not the asshole. Yeah. You agreed. just might be the taint, you know, between. <laughs> <laughs> Is you, that a you, word people use? Nowadays? I don't think people really use it that colloquially. You always seem to assume people know. Do you know what a taint is? Mm-mm. Oh, it's really it's I the spot a, between the spot between the anus. It taint the anus and it taint the other. But do women have taints, or is it just a men? Everyone thing? has a taint. Oh, really? Yeah, I okay. think yes. The taint is the thing between the the <laughs> the, the, gen, the, the genitalia. genitalia and the anus. <laughs> okay. I can't believe that's not a thing anymore. No. You don't know what taint is? How no. old are you? No. Thirty one. <laughs> That's so sad. Andy's it's a great so word. distraught. It's a word. It needs to be said. You don't. What else? What word are you going to call that? What are you going to call that? The area. Maybe people don't want to have a name You're for You're going to give it a whole sentence instead yeah. of just taint? Yeah. All right. Anyway, <laughs> my point is, is you did nothing wrong, but knowing his uh, general disposition to be jealous, I would avoid saying anything about having even the tiniest crush on somebody, especially your boss. That, that's all I'm saying. It doesn't change the whole the story, the but it alters it the slightest bit in his favor. I'm not giving him a lot of credit for it, but yeah, watch out with that. Yeah. I, I would say. I think that mm-hmm. three weeks, the, you know, you're reaching that threshold where if it lasts much longer, then it's like, okay, how long am I going to be punished Yeah, mm-hmm. for I agree. saying it was a meaningless crush? I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I still think you should have the talk for sure. I agree. Um, mm-hmm. it doesn't change anything. The Just, focus being on, look how honest I was. I was too honest. Yeah. Be too ca- honest. Be careful. It's like if someone has a fear of heights, you're not going to say, oh, we should go skydiving this weekend. You know, it's just like, be yeah. tread carefully around the topic. That's yeah. all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's so beautiful what you said about like, cause I, I'm, I think I'm just someone who, um, I, uh, tend to, so I was single for two years before we met and I am someone who is very much like. Uh, interested in like self-improvement and I I tend to like feel like oh I have to like make myself the best version of myself before I'm ready to fully you know Mm -hmm. have a healthy relationship and I think I've been worrying that like oh my god like maybe he hasn't worked through this issue and does this mean we can't we're not this is the right timing for us or he's not ready and that's really nice to hear that you think that like you know there are some issues that can be worked through with someone else. Oh, definitely. Certainly. This is nowhere near like he can't oh, no. be in this a relationship. Is minor. This level. is like yeah. Bush League stuff. Yeah. This is not a big deal. Yeah. And I again, think you can work through this easily. I think time is going to be your best friend in this situation. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then second best is having a conversation. And just, just so I know, is everything else in the relationship good? Like, are you everything else? I mean, else are you is... kidding? She had like two full paragraphs at the top about it. No, I know, but I just asking I, for the I want to, I want to, one sentence, like, like, tell me how good it is. It's really lovely. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. So worth preserving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And tell him that. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. let him infect your relationship. You deserve more trust than that after a year and three months, in my opinion. Yeah. And you can say, mm-hmm. my bad, like I slipped up saying meaningless crush, but like, look how honest. Yeah. Over your wine. One wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elizabeth. I hope this was helpful. Yeah, You're not the asshole. Oh. She can't be an asshole. Look no, at her. You don't, I don't. Okay, Elizabeth. Well, I hope this was helpful. And keep us posted. I feel yeah. optimistic about your I situation. I do too. This is this is a bump, not a, not a hill. It's not even a hill. It's a bump. A oh. slight speed bump. Speed bump. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like probably the first speed bump for the two of you. By the way, I hit a speed bump on the electric bike last night. Totally pitch black. Did not see it coming. Let me tell you, that is a shock. I wish you wouldn't. No, I don't. I don't go fast enough for that to be a shock. It wasn't even that fast, but those things have no shock absorbers. I get upset when he goes so fast on the electric. It's, have you ever done that? Totally pitch black. Just suddenly like, boom. Yeah, no. Very scary. A, but it's a, not even that kind of speed bump. It's like the one oh. you see coming and you slow down and you just go boom and then you keep going. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that makes me feel better. Okay. All right. Keep us posted, Elizabeth. Thank you so much Thank for you. calling in. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye. Charlene, you know when you really appreciate something that's great mm-hmm. is when you try a competitor. Oh, it's true. Because, okay, so we are long time Squarespace customers long before we started Dear Shanty. But recently for something business related for you, someone made the call. It was not, this was not your no, decision. without my say. Yes. Did something with a competitor. 
of Squarespace. And now it has become a problem that you have to fix. And every single time there is so much cursing going on in this apartment, it sounds a lot like if they had gone with Squarespace, dot, 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 it would have been fine. You know what? I didn't realize it until now, but I have for the slightest amount taken Squarespace for granted. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, first of all, your destination to making gorgeous websites with little to no web building experience. I mean, their templates make it so easy. You just plug and play your graphics, your imagery, your information. But it's also cutting edge. It's not like they've rested on their laurels. They keep upgrading their features, their abilities. You know what Squarespace is? They are a veteran industry leader. Mm -hmm. And you can tell because they are both extremely intuitive for the novice but also have all the features needed for the expert. Yes. Well, oh, very good, Andy. Mm -hmm. Were you, were you stewing on that? <laughs> no, it's true. In my case, I never took lessons on this. You know, it's not like I was like, oh, I'm going to go to Squarespace school and learn how to make websites. No, their help team. You can mm. talk with experts life-changing. I'm like, oh, I want that feature. I can even send an example from another page and be like, I want to make something that looks like this. And they're like, oh, you should use this feature. You're talking to a human. You can tell. Yeah, a human <laughs> you can tell when you're talking to you a human. You know what it feels like? It feels like you're going to a company that has a place called the Menius Bar. <laughs> Let's call that company Orange. <laughs> And they really do help you. They have helped me. They've held my hand so many times. You know, their customer service is award winning. Yeah. And let me tell you, you can tell. Okay, so quickly, we have to talk features with Squarespace. You can add a calendar. You can get booked through the site. Let, let's say you provide a service, e-commerce. You can sell products. You can do mailing lists. You can do analytics. You can do all sorts of galleries, which is huge. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Shandy for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Shandy for 10% off your first purchase of a website website or domain. Okay. Ah, uh, that, that one went on a journey. That one went on a journey. Yeah. I kind of feel like we should have focused on the crush thing. In the beginning. I don't think she said it. I thought, I think she did. And I was like, it's no big deal. But then when you uh, brought it up again later, I was like, yeah, I maybe could have worded I, we that differently. <laughs> no, but we would have jumped on it in the first place I there's no way i would have let that slide i mean they're gonna we're gonna find out i guess yeah, the yeah, hard yeah, way yeah. <laughs> people will be like yeah. it's at 626 yeah. she said the word crush <laughs> yeah i mean uh, crush gate this is one of those like it takes two to tango situations i definitely yeah. think you know he's been burned so we have to take that in. we have to have like empathy for why he is the way he is sure for me, I, I'm slightly concerned that it's coming up 80 to 90% of the times they hang out. You know, I think that, you know, how well, long... Well, it's you, been three weeks, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yes. But it's, it's getting long and in the And they don't tooth. live together. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. they've been together 15 months. So it's yeah. not like they've been together two months and now a, a good chunk of their relationship has been spent with him guilt tripping her over yeah, this. Yeah. But I'm reminded of a quote you once said, Andy. Oh, yeah, well, I'm being quoted a yeah, lot yeah. today. Let's hear it. In a Q&A where mm. you said you should be wary of people who uh, relish punishing you. Oh, uh, yes. I, I, you didn't word it quite like that. Yeah. I don't know if you use the word relish. I don't A word that I relish using. Oh, <laughs> How yes. good is the word relish? Well, it's it's great. It, it's good in both, both uses. No, I actually don't really like relish very much. No, I don't like relish itself, but I think the thing that it is should be called relish. One hundred percent that is relish like that can't be anything else no it's relish you like pickled spread yeah, it's stew <laughs> yeah it's just like it's like relish mush. yeah it's, it's, it's so relish. distinct it's relish yeah okay so the thing you said i think applies here it's like okay it's for now it's him overcoming his insecurity and yeah. she's appeasing him and telling him how much she cares about him all the things and then when it starts to teeter if it starts to teeter into i'm punishing you for something for a crime you never really committed or let's say the biggest crime here is her saying that she had a meaningless crush i think that that's kind of problematic yeah it, that he's turning her into a villain that she really isn't and i think the focus here 100 percent should be on her 
I, in my opinion, borderline brutal honesty. Yeah. She's yeah. too honest. She's too honest. And, and honestly, people who are too honest, usually it's a good sign. 100%. I mean, wouldn't you rather have someone who's too honest than too not honest? Yes. Yes. I mean, you can make a case that, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, whatever. Yeah. I don't speak no evil. <laughs> I guess that's not important. But, uh, <laughs> but I think that I want someone who's honest with me. Mm-hmm. I want someone who comes home and says, guess what? Just had sex with my boss. <laughs> I'm like, well, now I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it is a fine line. You need to bear in mind other people's feelings. Yeah. It's interesting. It almost feels out of character for her to have said that after I, talking to her. I agree. She seems more reserved. Like she'd be very careful. Yeah. It's but interesting. I, maybe she's that's so why, honest. Maybe that's why I missed it in the beginning because we didn't, we hadn't spoken to her long enough or uh, something. I'm trying to give I myself an excuse here. But, you know, we talked to her for a while now and now I'm like, I'm kind of surprised she said that. Yeah, it's out of character, I think. Yeah. So maybe we but just don't know. It her. also says something about how much he pressed her. Pressed. He was looking. He was looking for it. He wanted. Yeah, he it. was looking for some 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 nuggets to hold yeah. on to. Maybe he really what he wants is he wants it to be true, and he's like a cuckold. <laughs> you know, there might be something there. It's actually, very possible. That's yeah. something else to explore. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> over there one one. Can you imagine if in like a year she's like, I have an update yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. I've banged my boss. I banged my coworker. And banged he watches the guy in the every train time. yesterday. <laughs> and he's into it. <laughs> yeah. That I mean, that would be a very exciting development, but it's not necessary. This is gonna be okay. As yeah. I said, speed bump, not even the one I hit with the bike, just like just whoop boing, like a Canadian speed bump. You know, in Canada, it's unbelievable. In Canada, the speed bumps are less high than the speed bumps in America. Everything in Canada is more like polite, even the speed bumps. I find the speed bumps in Canada are like longer and lower. Yeah, and lower. Yeah, it's more like you can, keep you, this in mind, but we're not going to Yeah, it's like, oh, you, you might be going a little faster. <laughs> but you know, I, I've i hit those speed, I drive out of your drive, I mean, I've driven your car out of your driveway yeah, yeah, yeah. into town a million yeah. times. I into hit, town. <laughs> into, into town. Yeah. I go to town and I hit those speed bumps very fast. <laughs> Yeah. Don't, don't advertise slow down that at the all. point of the speed bumps is no, that you slow down. That's true. You should slow down. Your dad, your dad speeds up for no, speed yeah, bumps. No, yeah, okay. Well, let's not reveal that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, right, all right. So she was lovely. I'm not worried. Not worried. Should, Should I be? be? Fine. No, I'm not I don't worried. think so. Not worried at all. Yeah. She was worried this was red flag territory. No. I, d- I think it's premature. It could be, but it's premature to no. know for sure. I agree. All right. Shall we wrap there? So I'm, I'm a little upset about the, the, the taint thing. That's not a thing anymore. I think you got, yeah, I, I don't think you need to drop that so casually into conversation. Taint? Yeah, I think that a lot of people don't necessarily know what that means. I'm really? sorry. <sighs> You're so disappointed. I feel like that's more likely a word that gets thrown around casually and jokingly among your guys you and your guy friends. I like, I'm you... not at dinner with my girlfriends being like, ha ha ha, he's not an asshole. He's just a taint. I yeah. <laughs> can't even imagine Okay, it. first of all, I will poll... All your friends. And I almost guarantee you, it, maybe there'll be one holdout. All of them will know what taint is. I'm going to go with 70% will. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. 100. I'm going 100. Okay. I won't even, not even one holdout. Every single one of your All friends. Right. Okay. You're the only one. <laughs> I know what it means. Oh, so there you go. So who doesn't know what taint means? Elizabeth. <laughs> That's the only person who doesn't know what taint means. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but okay, we're supposed to be wrapping. Okay. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify, podcast ratings and reviews, tell your friends, and maybe ask them if they know what the word taint means, (laughs) and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye.